Hi guys, I am Shaft of the Cleaning Casting Crew. I got a visitor today. It's my buddy Sinbad. Oh, he's such a little puppy. He's asleep in my lap, or he was. I probably just woke his ass up. But anyways, guys, welcome to a cast. We've got a really exciting game for you today on Old Arena, which is everybody's favorite map to hate, of course. Um, so we'll see what kind of uh, surprising stuff we've got in a Protoss versus Protoss matchup. Kind of excited there, but we'll be getting into those details very shortly. Actually, guys, I've got a bunch of replays coming out for you um, over the next few days. I'm actually going to be going on a trip to Washington, D.C. to help my uncle move. I actually won't be helping much, but my parents said they'd feel more comfortable if I went with them because, you know, if I fell and couldn't get up, there'd be literally no one here to help me. So I'm going to be going with them. Should be a road trip. Wasn't expecting it, but I am going to make sure you guys are covered where it comes to casts. So without any further ado, we're going to hop right into this one. Here in the bottom left hand side of Arena in the Blue Brotoss trunks. A member of the now defunct Apocalypse Esports. Interesting story, we'll get to that in a moment. His name in Finnish means Jovial Prankster. It's Velmu. Or Velmu, depending on your pronunciation. He's going for a gateway first. Awesome, awesome sauce. And here on the top left hand side, it's. Crazy Force Esports. Jonic! He's a high level Masters player, ready and determined to take one over on Welmu, who's actually a very underestimated player. He's honestly one of my contenders as a foreign hope. I think a lot of people, you know, were thinking that a few months back, maybe closer to a year. But this guy's really on his way uh, to becoming one of the best Protoss players in the uh, foreigner esports scene. And uh, yeah, so Protoss vs. Protoss, kind of a different change of pace. We typically focus on the Zerg oriented stuff on this channel, but I'm excited to bring this to you. A little bit of a delayed Cybercore. I don't know if that's a mistake out of Jonic. But, anyways, Apocalypse Esports was a team that lasted for about half a month. Actually, there's a lot going on right now with that it was originally owned by the guy who did or maybe not owned managed would be a better word by the guy who did uh brawl esports and endurance esports i believe they were called imaginary gaming at one point kind of a guy with some history i know um brawl in particular was known um for some hacking and endurance despite the name didn't actually last that long and of course apocalypse esports i guess it was doomed from the beginning because you know apocalypse but uh it lasted about half a month and apparently the owner defaulted on um, their contract. He wanted a CSGO team, a Dota team, and a StarCraft team, all professional. He had about a $185,000 budget for two years and apparently the guy lied and said his wife was in the hospital or something and there's a lot of drama going on around that but uh, anyways there's going to be legal action regarding that so I'm kind of interested to see how that ends up. Uh, happening is just really unfortunate for players like Velmu or Wellmu. Uh, again, whenever I see like a Finnish or a Swedish or any kind of Norse name, I just immediately want to substitute that W for a V. But, um, oh yeah, nice kill on that probe there. But yeah, it's really, really unfortunate for the players. Um, because, you know, if you are a professional player and you're guaranteed a certain salary on your contract, well, that's going to be money you're paying your bills with. So if someone doesn't pay you, of course, you're going to be behind on your bills. And if this guy's just immediately not going to have the money, like, because that's what the story's coming out to be, is that he does not, literally does not have the money, um, it really puts players like, you know, Wellmu in a rough position. Now, let's get really into this game, because we've got four stalkers moving out here, and... With the faster um, Stargate coming here for Jonic, it means he's going to cut into his own Stalker count. Now, it is four Stalkers against four Stalkers right now, but uh, some decent micro from both players does reduce that to three each. Here's the thing, Jonic's got the defender's advantage, and again, the faster Stargate. Also, a Phoenix coming out to his opponent's Oracle. We'll see how this ends up working out. A little bit of uh, metagaming going on here. Um, so I've 
been studying up with my buddy Torque a little bit on how exactly Protoss matchups work. Apparently, disruptors were really a big thing in Protoss vs. Protoss, but with this most recent balance um, patch, apparently, you know, this Phoenix play is really getting a lot more popular. And here it is. Ooh, a little bit of a uh, harassment here with the first Phoenix. Going to uh, have a hard time killing off anything. Did waste a little bit of that energy, but he is going to get a kill on that sentry. So no poking at the Phoenix for now. And of course, both players are going for that robo, but Wellmu delaying his Stargate was able to get his robotics facility out just a little hair quicker. Now that is going to be the transition to disruptors, possibly, um, or we'll see what these guys have up their sleeves from here. Now we do have a Twilight Council also coming out of Velmu, which means he does have literally um, every tech option open to him. He's got the robotics facility, he's got the Stargate, and now, of course, he's got the Twilight Council. That's going to be a lot of gas spent on buildings rather than units, and he's only just now taking the fourth gas at his natural. There is no third base to be seen, so he could be spreading himself just a little bit too thin, and of course that Oracle does go down, so Jonic now with the air advantage. There's the blink. Okay, so it looks like... Okay, so he's going to go for some kind of blink stalkers to... And there's the uh, the forge as well. Yeah, this guy's going to be spending a lot of gas. He's going to need to take a very fast third base in order to sustain himself. Where his opponent, I mean, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see him throw up a bunch of gateways and just push. Because unlike Velmu, he's not actually spending that gas. Only just now taking his third gas, not even thought about his fourth. Which does indicate some kind of heavy gateway play. Of course, um, well moved playing for the, the end game here because of the upgrades do tend to indicate that a player is aiming for that. Of course, he's got a higher drone count here as well, and uh, that could just be pure mechanics on his part because, uh, you know, with that advantage, he can play defensively. He can actually afford to take this third base a little bit quicker and play just that hair greedy. I really do like this, and uh, looks like not a whole lot of joking around here going for Wellmu. He's usually a little bit more talkative in his games, but I think this may be for uh, a tournament. I believe actually this was DreamHack, so that could explain the uh, lack of banter here. And uh, you know, he's really on time with his third base, seven minute third base, Legacy of the Void, great to at forcing players to just go ahead and start expanding early and really to never stop it. It really makes the game more exciting in my opinion because you'll get more of this harassment style which we're seeing with these phoenixes with a lot of small skirmishes everywhere because it forces players to expand. When they expand they're going to have more territory to cover which means more possibilities for there to be weak points. And we actually have Jonic going ahead and taking his third base after securing his fourth gas. And we're going to see a Templar Archives coming out now for him. And a couple more gateways coming out for our friend in the blue trunks. Blue trunks. And there's a plus one upgrade wrapping up now. Uh, that's going to be necessary for these stalkers as the Phoenix count is being pretty annoying. I don't see any more Phoenix in production, but just getting the most out of the Phoenixes he does have. Now, Wellmu getting a little bit tired of the constant harassment. He's going to go ahead and knock these rocks right on down, wants to secure an attack on this third base of Jonic around the time it completes. Not quite enough time to cancel it, and uh, that is the ideal time actually to attack someone when they are expanding. Now he's got six sentries and a mess of stalkers, but he's got a few less immortals. However, he gets a great kill on that first immortal. Phoenix is running right into a hail of stalker fire and actually uh, looks like with that faster gas and a little more more dedication to the gateway count, Wellmu's gonna uh, be able to overwhelm this. I wonder if the defender's advantage is going to be enough because we do have some great force fields right now out of Wellmu really peeling his opponent apart with that and in fact 
that is the end of most of those gateway units, the Immortals. Uh, really, the only thing left here, and oh, great blink stop right onto the house of mortals. There's the GG. Wow, guys, an awesome game. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been my pleasure to cast. Hopefully, you'll tune in tomorrow. We've got some great stuff in store for you. See you then. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining us. It's been my pleasure to present this to you. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. As always, I'm honored that you came to this channel, and if you're staying for the credits, then clearly you enjoyed this content. If so, please be a super fan. Go ahead and hit subscribe. Subscribe to us on Twitter, twitter.com slash the only shaft. It's listed right here. And you know, if you're a super, super, super fan, Visit us on Patreon, patreon.com slash the only shaft. I couldn't ask for better fans than you guys. You're amazing. Remember that and have a great day.